still set to, which is that America. Professor Sipko, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the Chinese Embassy in Slovakia, together with our co-organizer, the Institute of Economic Research of the Slovak Academy of Sciences, I would like to extend warm welcome to all of you present here. I would also like to say thanks to Professor Juraj Sipko for his efforts and cooperation in preparing this conference. Today's topic is the Belt and Road Initiative. That is the official name uh, for China. And uh, I'll simply call it BRI. So experts from both China and Europe are going to share their views of opportunities and the challenges of the BRI. Before we listen to them, I would like to share with you some facts and my view of the BRI. Well, currently, the reform of the international system and the development of the world economy have reached a crucial moment. And China put forward the BRI six years ago, sending its strong voice against surging anti-globalization, unilateralism and protectionism. The initiative is an open platform for international cooperation that aims to promote common development and prosperity of different countries. It is a driving force for building a community with a shared future for mankind. And the BRI follows the principle of consultation and cooperation for shared benefits. It is not forced unto anyone, nor does it exclude or target against any country. It has created enormous opportunities for all participants. So in the past six years, cumulative trade between China and the participating countries has exceeded trillion US dollars. Direct Chinese investment in participating countries has exceeded 80 billion US dollars, creating 240,000 local jobs. And through BRI cooperation, East Africa now has its first motorway. The Maldives has built its first inter-island bridge. Belarus is able to produce passenger cars. Kazakhstan is connected to the sea. Southeast Asia is constructing a high-speed railway. And the Eurasian continent is benefiting from the longest distance freight train service. Plenty of facts like this are proof that the BRI is an economic pie that benefits the people and a great opportunity for shared development. So far, the Belt and Road spirit has been incorporated into the outcome documents of important international institutions including the UN, the G20, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and the Asia-Europe meeting. 124 countries and 29 international organizations have signed BRI cooperation documents with China. It shows international support and confidence in the BRI. In about three weeks' time, the BRI will again capture the world's attention. The second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation will be held in Beijing from 25th to 27th this month. 
with the theme of Belt and Road Cooperation, shaping a brighter shared future. The second Belt and Road Forum aims to bring about high quality cooperation under the BRI. As far as I know, thousands of candidates from over 100 countries will attend the forum. We strongly believe that China and all parties will take this opportunity to have a thorough exchange of views on future cooperation plans, thus achieving mutually beneficial and win-win results. Dear friends, I'm pleased to say that the understanding of the BRI in Europe is increasing and China-EU cooperation on this initiative is showing an encouraging momentum. More and more European countries have joined the construction of the Belt and Road. Just two weeks ago, Italy and Luxembourg respectively signed MOU with China to jointly build the Belt and Road. The freight train service between China and Europe is a convincing example of how the BRI can drive common development and prosperity of China and Europe with enhanced connectivity. China is always ready to work together with the EU to further strengthen the integration between the Euro-Asia Collectivity Strategy and the BRI to draw, to draw on each other's strength, focus on shared interests, and deepen mutually beneficial cooperation. So, as the Chinese ambassador to Slovakia, I'm glad to see that the Slovak side has, has given active support and in involvement in BRI cooperation. In 2015, Slovakia became one of the first European countries to sign a MOU with China on cooperation between the governments in building the Belt and the Road. And over the past four years, exchanges and cooperation in various fields between our two countries have flourished within the framework of the BRI, and the results are quite remarkable. And in 2018, the trade volume between China and Slovakia exceeded 7 billion US dollars. which is a new high in our uh, trade record. So here, I would like to pay tribute to the elderly lady, who is the State Secretary and also the plenipotentiary of the Slovak government for negotiations of the Belt and Road. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude for you. Yeah. Yeah. So he, has, he has done a lot to promote uh, the BRI. Uh, and he just came back from, from China uh, two days ago. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between China and Slovakia. And in this important year, we hope that Slovakia will play a more active role in the BRI cooperation and seize the new opportunities since China keeps deepening reform and opening up. Therefore, we can raise the friendly, cooperative relations between our two countries to a new level. Well, although the BRI has made tremendous progress, there is still much room for improvement. So constructive suggestions are always welcome. This is one of the main purposes of today's conference, and I hope that you can all speak your mind freely on how to collect the development strategy of Europe and the BRI and put forward suggestions for addressing consequent challenges. 
I'm confident that with everyone pitching in, the BRI will benefit all the participating countries and its peoples. Finally, let's wish today's conference a great success. Thank you.